Moving on from Ursula Kamine, we have to talk about E1 again. We have to talk about E1 again. So E1 in London has become a hot button topic in nightlife with clubs and shit because it's been getting a little bad rep. Um, justifiably so, I think, because it legitimately, like I've said before, might be the best and worst club in London. It might be the best and worst club in London because it's the best because it has some of the best lineups we have on any given weekend outside of fold i think in terms of a breadth of artists from covering from edm from tech house melodic house to techno to disco no disco i don't think they don't do but in general they cover most of the big genres and they have a stacked lineup and usually it's open until six so if you want to go to a nightclub in london that's open until 6 a.m that also covers a huge range of genres that has some of the bigger djs playing in a big in two big rooms then obviously e1 is a place to go but unfortunately, it has some very big negatives, right? The security are incredibly heavy-handed. The queue system is a bit of an is a bit annoying. The security itself, in terms of being searched, is really intrusive. Um, the place itself is incredibly warm. There's no air conditioning. It's incredibly sweaty inside there. The sound is a bit overrated and only really loud if you go to the front. And just in general, it's a fucking hellscape when it comes to the cusp punters that go there. It attracts a very dodgy crowd because they don't have any you know there's no door picking at the door apart from just don't arrive there drunk or like smashed and you'll get in but there's no real door selection door picking there so just about everybody that has money can go in there which obviously creates a bit of a weird environment and maybe because of the range of acts they have there that cover such a broad range of you know dance music or electronic music it means that you have so many different types of people coming in at once so it's not there's no real commonality in the personality and shit it's all kind of all over the place um, and obviously that kind of leads to some issues especially when it comes to the age thing because a lot of the kids that go there sometimes can be a little bit you know rung bunctious and shit but in general it's a fucking hellscape but people online have been letting people know in detail how terrible it is and there's been some weird wild threads on reddit recently this once um, from 15 days ago says e1 is awful again and this one in particular says do not go to e1 so we're going to read a few of these posts and see what people are saying about e1 because i've i've long said this before myself but i think i was one of the first vocal voices out there that said hey e1's a bit shit in it and unfortunately for e1 or for, unfortunately for people like myself that complain e1 is terrible but they still have some of the best lineups in London. So even though I'm reading what I'm reading, most likely I'll be there again, you know, in a weekend coming up very soon. Most likely New Year's Day. So all this stuff, all this shit that I'm talking about fucking E1 matters none because most likely I will be there once again because the lineups are just too fucking impressive. But let's read some of the complaints. This one says E1 is awful again. Posting this here as I read negative reviews from the more grab post last week and I wanted to highlight that not only had nothing changed but he had gotten worse. <laughs> I heard before that I went to E1 that it could be maxed out venue. However, I want to stress that my experience was that was that bad if one one person to put off from going there from this point. The Mixmag Over Mono event was the most oversold, dangerous event I've ever attended and was quite literally the perfect storm of a tragedy to happen. E1 really is a horrific venue. Only seven male toilets for a crowd of 1,000 people. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Actually, that's a very good point. Seven toilets for 1,000 people. And best believe people are either in there doing, you know, having fucking drug shits which are fucking, st you've never, you've never smelled a worse shit unless you've been in the toilet after someone's done drugs and they've had a shit. Drug shit smells so fucking bad. So either they're doing drug shits or they're doing drugs in there. So when you go in their toilets, you're gonna, you're gonna have an experience one way or the other. Um, only one seven male toilets for a crowd of 1000 plus only two doors for each stage leading to bottlenecking and crushing and crushing at peak times of entry. After turning up at midnight, it took me 90 minutes 90 minutes in an incredibly packed crowd and um, this can't be understressed how busy and packed it was to get in and put my jacket away even the second room was absolutely rammed during over mono set this event was not just oversold by one to two thousand but by at least 500 plus so this person's alleging that they might have oversold the event by 500 <laughs> it's not it's also not even mentioning the problem that this club is has with the crowd it can attract rude it can attract and rude staff if e1 is has one hater i am that hater if it has no haters i'm no longer alive exactly that's definitely what i'm saying but the thing about the rude staff which i'll give them a bit of a bly with i think working in a nightclub is probably one of the most thankless jobs anyway right 
it's definitely not a great job. I've worked in bars for a long, for a small period of time, and it's very hard to to be a good bartender because you do encounter some fucking scoundrels. But I think nightclubs might be a level above. Like being a bartender in a nightclub, you must meet some absolute fucking cunts. The worst of humanity turn up at night. Like my parents always just say, nothing really good happens you know after 9 p.m and it's true really even though i go to raves a lot and i party and stuff all the worst things have happened in my life have definitely happened to me after 9 p.m <laughs> so can you imagine being sober and working in a nightclub and having to talk to fucking and communicate with fucking ravers and people are drunk and high and shit so i think if you work in a nightclub it's pretty hard not to be rude when you are surrounded by drunk and high people who are constantly repeating their orders to you touching you talking to you rude throwing their money at you whistling clicking it like just being an annoying and whatever it can be hard not to be rude so i think the rude thing is whatever but for me it's just the security it's too much you go to honestly i've seen I've, i think i've seen more security at e1 than, than i see at fucking stansted there's more security at e1 than fucking stansted and they're ready to throw down. They look like they're ready to go. They're ready to. They're ready to fucking throw down if you say something. Like, and the search is aggressive, bro. They search every fucking cranny of your bag, every fucking cr every fucking crevice of your fucking body. It's a complete fucking vibe killer. Um, what are you guys saying? You know, I think. Uh, big up Robert Henry Parrot. Salute to AZ here to help us keep entertained with while the pause deal with the redactors of this crazy. Well, exactly. Big up, big up, big up Robert Henry Parrot. Uh, 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 what you're gonna appreciate you appreciate you appreciate you appreciate you and big up half moon bardo too love agos best lur best been lurking i think um listening material oh sorry best lurking listening material uh keep it up g keep it coming g okay thank you so much half moon bardo appreciate you bro appreciate you um let's continue um no i think fuck jerry menrick um when they say seven toilets they mean seven actual toilets i think the stalls are what they are I, I, from where, when i've been to e1 i think you can maybe fit five people in the stalls it's like a it's one of those like metal ones it's not like individual it's like one of those big metal ones um but there's only seven toilets with doors with sorry seven toilets with doors and a lock it continues here um some comments very important to raise these issues unfortunately club owners promoters greed goes this issue should be raised by the hse um another one says here i'm compelled to i'm compl i'm compelled to chime in and back up what you're saying my friend was in tears uh, in the crush trying to get into other on a set and it was somehow only got worse up the, uh, from there copy and paste in my google review easily the worst night out i've had in london probably the worst night out of my life roughly 1.5 times oversold went to see Overmono, and you physically couldn't get in the door to the main room thanks for the free beer but that's not worth a 30 pound ticket oh by the way the, the reason why they mentioned this is because fucking e1 which is really dodgy to do this because i don't think this is i don't think this is um this is legal allegedly e1 give people free tickets and free drink tokens if they go and they leave a good good google review or they leave or they tell you basically here's a free ticket and a drink token give us a google review because i guess the google reviews for e1 are terrible so they're trying to counteract it and have people go there and you know whatever but it's like isn't that a bit that sounds a bit illegal isn't it that you're basically bribing people with free entry and fucking drink tokens to leave you google reviews or positive ones is a bit it sounds a bit dodgy to be fair um spoke to tons of instead of just and the funny thing about it instead of just like addressing the issues people are having you're just bribing them with drinks and free entry why not just sort the issues out why not just like install bare air conditioning why not have different entry and exit points why not simplify the entry process why not maybe half the security why not have a door picking introduced there because they still make a ton of money. They still sell a bunch of tickets. Just have door pickers. It's not that hard, really, to, to, to kind of change the mood of the place a little bit. But anyway, what do I know? It continues. I spoke to tons of people. Virtually all of them were there for the first time because if you went there, you would never go back. <laughs> Four can for the t for a can of water in the main room and no tap water. You can go for another bar to get tap water, but you can't physically get back in the main room. So they either stamp up or get out jesus christ imagine paying four pounds for water fuck off never written a google review before but this experience was so bad i felt compelled to shout out to the staff there who were doing their best with the shite hand that they were dealt with please go to smaller venues in london that care about the experience and need your money that's very very true that's very 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 true and someone's saying here the best two clubs in london are folding corsica studios i've had a bit of a 
I've, I've purposely been on a bit of a break from going to fold. I've been going there for too long. Obviously, I've spoken about it glowingly on this podcast many a times. And obviously, it's still the best club in London. But I feel like sometimes going to the same place all the time is a bit boring. Do you know what I mean? But unfortunately, it really is the only place to go to. Unfortunately, the only places really to actually go to club-wise I would recommend if you're in London will probably be Fold, Venue MOT, and maybe the Colour Factory. And actually the Yard. The Yard and the Colour Factory in Hackney Wick, they're really good, very underrated. They're not open super late though. And of course, um, Venue MOT, um, and of course, Fold. But going to Fold every single weekend, going to the same club every weekend, even if it's really good. Like if I lived in Berlin, I wouldn't just be going to Berghain every weekend. It's just kind of boring. But unfortunately... When you go to places like E1, you realize why you go to Fold because E1 is so terrible. So, so, so fucking terrible. It kind of beggars belief. So the other post someone posted is this. Don't go to E1. Went to the fourth anniversary mainly to see Overmono and Flynn and O'Flynn. O'Flynn's se second biggest name on the roster opened the smallest stage from 12 to 10, 12 to 2. Uh, doors open at 11. It was absolutely heaving for O'Flynn so 45 minutes short of his set finishing a lot of myself included moved to the main room to get a good sport um for fucking Overmono so this guy is saying that O'Flynn is a big name as well and he had a way too of an earlier set right imagine you're playing at fucking 12 to 2 so you're getting people piling in really early to see one of the co-main headliners play a set one hour into the opening like <laughs> that's not really good at crowd management is it um, it was absolutely heaving for O'Flynn. So if I've been short of his set, finishing a lot of a lot of us, including myself, moved to the main room to get a good spot for Overmono. This room was already uh, absolutely heaving. You could barely move, even three quarters of us of the way to the back of the room. It was it got busier and busier by the minute, and it was seriously dangerous. It was outrageously hot, so no one could move. Literally no movement. And I've been to all the stages at SC Corner at Glasgow. Crushes were happening. Girls were worried for their safety, and it was until ultimately incredibly dangerous. Jesus Christ! We left after forty five minutes of the Overmono because of how unpleasant it was. There was nowhere to get a space other than the stage, packed smoking area, ridiculous security, unhelpful and unprofessional, and not even going to bother talking about the outrageous cues for the toilets cloakroom and bars 450 it's now 450 for a can of water they bumped up by, by 50 pence because they don't have potential to kill somebody don't go there you know what's going to happen someone's going to have to die unfortunately similar to fabric fabric never got a handle on the punters that went there never really got a handle on the drug situation there, security whatever and they had to get to a point where people died and they you know they essentially nearly lost their license and were going to get closed down and then people kind of protested and now they're back open again and i think someone died there recently too but they're still open i'm not really sure, sure how but e1's gonna have something tragic happen and then they're gonna wake up it's gonna be too late It'd be nice if they just kind of paid attention and heeded the warnings of the punters now because there's probably an element of these people who are being a little bit dramatic and being a little bit, you know, whatever. You can maybe say that. Maybe there's an element of being a true dramatic because it's like, you know, what do you expect when you're going to see Overmono playing in a place like E1? Of course, he's going to be in demand, right? It's one of the, the biggest fucking acts out here, right? Or they're one of some, they're some of the biggest acts out here when it comes to um, dance music. So maybe there's an element of drama, an element of, you know, whatever, exaggeration. But there is some truth in what people are saying. And if you just address it and kind of deal with these issues before it gets worse or before it gets fatal, it can save a lot of trouble. But unfortunately, especially in nightlife, people don't really change course until they have to, right? Like until the sound system breaks, that's when they fucking think of fixing it. So most likely someone will unfortunately get really hurt, potentially maybe even pass away and then they'll wake up and by then it might be too late which is really sad to see. Um, people are saying, yeah, fuck supporting the venue that doesn't even provide free water for dancers. Exactly, exactly. Imagine not having free water. From, no, I'm not mistaken. I don't think that's true. I think there's one place that you're not allowed to, you can't get water. I think the bars you can get water from is the one in, um, oh, where is it? It's the second room. Or maybe it's the first bar. I think there's particular there's one particular bar you can get water from. I think it might be the I think it might be the bar which is across from the toilets. That's in a little like kind of corridor area. I think that's where you can get the free water from. They usually got a little tanker there on the side of the bar. So maybe that's what they're doing. Or maybe what they're doing is just really scummy. Maybe they're not they're not telling you where the free bar is, where the free water bar is, but they're just telling you you can only buy water here. That's probably what they're doing. They don't want people to go out to go get free water. They want you to buy the can of water because it's obviously 450 in their fucking tills, isn't it? Um, 
We'll see some other comments here. What people saying? I was at E1 for the opening party in 2018, and it was pretty much the same. So it's been the same since 2018. This person's alleging. See, I told you, someone's gonna have to die, and then they're gonna learn. But then it'd be too late. They blocked off the access of the main room, and it was a one in, one out. So people were queuing in the second room to get into the main room. <laughs> at least there was no crashes. But I distinctly remember thinking their organizers are in over their heads and never went back. Scary to think that they haven't figured it out half half a decade later. Another one says, completely echoed this. We just got in back from the room. Back, sorry, we just got into the back of the room five minutes before Overmona started and we left as we were completely squashed. Wow. I've never been to E1 where that main room is full to that extent. So they're saying E1, that main room is really big. It might be like, I don't know, a thousand capacity. They're saying that main room was full from the front to the back. Because usually when, you, when I go to people play at E1, it usually is only full from the end of the bar all the way to the front of the DJ booth. So for it to be full, the entire thing must have meant there was some, there were loads of fucking individuals in that place. I'm glad we left the set then, as I'm not sure we would have gotten out of the room later. It was oversold. I traveled down from Manchester for it. Have complained to RA who have passed it on to Mix. <laughs> complained to RA. What's that going to do? That's hilarious. What's that going to do? What's RA going to do about it? And it's on Mix Mag as to have whether to issue a refund. Um, the bar in the main room, also, E1 is owned by Mixmag. Is that why? Interesting. Or did Mixmag put on the event? Huh. Why would you complain to RA to get a refund from Mixmag? Why don't you just go straight to Mixmag? Anyway, the bar in the main room was only sold cans of water, sent you to a different bar to tap water, which meant battling through the massive crowd. Mixmag just wanted money and had absolutely no regard for anyone's safety. When we pushed out of the other mono room, there was girls literally screaming, I just want to get out. They physically put them, push their way in the crowd. I saw someone on Twitter say, and I'll take this with a pinch of salt, that one of the bar staff said to them, the max capacity is usually 1,600 and they sold 2,300. That's pure greed, isn't it? That is capitalism in full effect, isn't it? Instead of looking out for the safety of the ravers, because you're still making a killing on 1,600, let's make more money by selling 2,000 tickets. Oh my God, bro. Oh my God. Another one says here, um, been there a couple of times years ago and even though it wasn't that busy, I just didn't like the venue. It felt soulless. Exactly. That's what it feels about it. There's no residents there. There's no real like, I don't know. You There's no like, there's no continue. I don't think there's a residence type of in-house party thing they do either to be fair. The closest thing they've got is the E1 present sort of thing. They kind of in-house promotion to, but they don't really have resident DJs. There's no local promoters putting on raves there all the time because it's just too big. It's hard to kind of make that work on a monthly basis or even bi-monthly. Um, but yeah, that's probably why it feels soulless also. And also it's, in the, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere where it is. It's kind of, is it kind of whopping I'm saying station wise? I mean, London, it's kind of hard to describe if you're not from London, but it's kind of like, in a, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. Um, there's not a lot of like um, community around there either to be fair. So I might part, part of it. Another one says, yeah, the uh, one and only time I went to E1 was to see Helena Half in 2019. And that's exactly the same thing happened unbelievably packed crowds crushing against each other and the line for the women's was about three thousand years long <laughs> someone wiped their snot on me <laughs> holy shit someone wiped their snot on me holy fuck i bet people were shitting on the dance floor too i bet people were pissing and shitting on the dance floor if there's only seven cubicles and a, a urinal that only fits five guys and there's one there's two thousand three hundred people there i'm probably sure some people were shitting and pissing in corners. Can you imagine seeing that stuff in the morning as a cleaner? As a Londoner, I never go to E1 for a night out as I just can't trust it and it won't be the same. Apparently their head office is in shambles, which I totally can see. Yeah, of course. Can you imagine what the E1 head office looks like? It's probably just a, a room full of, covered in fucking ket and cocaine. That's what fucking I imagine when I see E1 fucking head office. I imagine guys with like, you know, tattoos you know blacked out sleeves and rings around their arms and line tattoos and shit right and drop crotch pants and dangly bits of earrings and stuff and just like powder everywhere 
everyone <laughs> sniffing. <laughs> I went to London for 10 days recently and visited seven clubs. E1 was the worst experience by a long shot. Op describes all of these issues with it as well. I was so disappointed by how overpacked it was. Um, the passageways between the rooms was uh, were also tiny choke points with people pushing to get through. I found the design to be awful. The only men's restroom I could find that had free working urinals for a very long line of people. I was surprised that it was rated so highly on DJ Mag's Top 100, but it made total sense when I realized the similar experience to New York's top rated DJ 100 clubs as well. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, but the one thing I've kind of been curious about is the New Year's Eve events or New Year's Day events because last time I checked, I don't know what happened, but Helena Health was meant to be playing all night long on the 31st or sorry, on the 1st of January. But somehow it's changed now and it's not the case. I don't know what actually is going on, but it keeps on changing the lineup. And I don't know what the deal is because now it's changed and it's loads of people. In the I don't know if it's like Helen the Half backed out of doing the the all night long affair that she was meant to be doing there because I was wanting to go to that. Or has it always been this? Because now I'm looking at the lineup here on RA. It says E1 and Percolate, 30 hour party for the New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. And again, it's a bad idea for me to go there, right? I read all those accounts, right? I read all these fucking accounts on Reddit talking about how horrible it is but unfortunately like i said e1 is the best and worst club in london the the worst or the worst and best the worst because of everything what everyone said and the best because it's the only place you can get these type of lineups there apart from maybe fold so for new year's eve the lineup is job jose um job jobsy sorry um midland um leon vinehall Bam bambuno nicks reese spooner soon um was that suny man um, Craylord and Farmer, Yasin, Kiman and Chapel Chalk. And in the NYD or Chapel Walk, sorry, NYD New Year's Day, daytime event, you've got Dax J, DVS1, Maron, um, B uh, Blasher and Alout, uh, and Antonio de Iglesias, Pre Silent, Head in the Health. So the Head in the Health thing is part of a New Year's Day lineup. So she's not playing all night long anymore. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what the deal is there. Why did that change? I'm pretty sure I saw a lineup that had Helen the Half playing all night long for New Year's Day, which I wanted to go to to see her play because she's an amazing DJ. But now it's like all these other people playing. It's like, I don't really care. So yeah, so I think I might just sack this off and stick with fucking, um, and stick with Hotbox because Hotbox have got a rave on on New Year's Day. So that might be a place I might go to. Unfortunately, Hotbox is sold out if you wanted the ticket. So that's not going to happen. But yeah, um, E1, um, again, nothing will change, I don't think, until they want to change. And I think they only will change when somebody passes away. That's my unfortunate prediction. Someone will, someone will pass away and then they'll end up changing, but it'll be too late. So, um, you know, I guess just enjoy it as you can, really. But yeah, you've been warned. You have been warned. And I think, to be honest, most of you will understand if you've been to a shitty club. It's got its good points. But I think the, for the most part, the entry, again, is a vibe killer with the security and the searching. And of course, if it's a busy night, you're waiting in the queue for ages. And then, of course, the bars are really expensive. Um, you know, um, there's no free water in some some of the bars. You have to leave to go to another room to go get it and shit. Um, the toilets are fucking horrendous. Like I said, like if, if somebody's not in there doing coke shits, they're in there doing fucking coke and they're taking fucking ages. So you're standing in the in, in the line for ages. The urinals are horrible, right? This full of fucking liquid everywhere. So that's kind of make you grow. So it's a tough place to go to. Maybe you have to before you go piss somewhere else because it's a tough place to go to. <laughs> 